Welcome back everybody. This is step two in the guide for making a budget. Before I begin though, I want to show you where we are going. There are different ways to make budgets and I want to you to see how I make my budget. The reason is you might not actually like the way I do it. And there are plenty of budgets out there. If this is one of those ones that speaks to you, I want you to keep on watching and going through these videos. If it isn't, then there's no hard feelings. That's perfectly okay. We all have different ideas of what a budget should look like. I am actually just happy that you are looking up some sort of budgeting help because that's all we want to do. The people out here making articles or videos really just want to help you. For me, there's nothing in it for me. I just want to just see you actually reach your financial goal. There's, there's some kind of satisfaction that I get that seeing people actually not in debt, reaching some sort of goal in the future and retiring early or at least on time. So when people build budgets, they think in the now. For me, I use cold, hard numbers. Like we have budgets out there that try to make this into a game that just goes month to month and then you pay things as they come up. What I like to do here is I like to see a yearly perspective. My budget plans for everything that you're going to buy for a whole year, like birthdays, holidays, vacations, car maintenance, all of that good stuff. That is all rolled into this budget. The whole idea with that is we know this is going to be paid for at some point in time. So realistically, I want to have the money for it as the day actually approaches. It hurts a lot less to buy Christmas presents if you've been chunking away money all this time. That's, that's really what your whole goal for this is. And that's what I've done throughout all the years. I've had this budget for roughly 14 years. As I went on, obviously I started tweaking it and doing different things to it. But the whole goal really is to have your expenditures, anything that you need to buy throughout the year, already paid up so that it's not going to hurt as bad or if anything unexpected comes up, like if you had to buy an extra present or if you just went out to eat unexpectedly, it's not going to be as bad. It shouldn't affect your budget all too much. Let's take a look at the budget that I created. What I use is an Excel spreadsheet. You can also use different methods. So I've seen people use apps on their phone. I've seen people use notebooks. Whatever works for you is the direction you're going to want to go. How I break this down is I have what I get paid out. So I don't use my real name at all. And um, I also label my wife as something different. So I am, I'm Big B. She is Mrs. B. For the sake of this, I've changed the amount of money that we make. And maybe I tweaked our bills a little bit. But in general, this is what it looks like. It, it's pretty realistic from what I did tweaking wise. So I made our amount of money the same. I said we make $50,000 at a 25% tax rate. So we get paid two times a month. Taking out any benefits, all that, all the taxes and all that stuff. We have $14.42 uh, per paycheck. And we're going to get that twice a month, like I said. What I do here is I break out my categories, if you will, into two different things. I have monthly bills and you'll hear other people say must. These are must haves. This is what you need to pay every month, no matter what. I just call them monthly bills. This is the stuff that is going to be at the top of your list of what needs to actually pay it out. Everything left over, as you can see here, is that $32.29. We, I count as variable spending. People will say once and all that. I really say it's variable spending because every month it's going to change for the most part. You're going to have different amounts of values that you're going to be paid. And depending on the month, you may or may not even use some of this money on there. So this is where I say about this is one of these budgets that I look at a yearly perspective because you will see down below we have gas that's for your car makes sense there's car maintenance and that is something that is paid every month like as in i leave a bucket of money for it because i know that's eventually going to happen i have groceries and daily essentials like, i'm going to just scroll down here we have vacation christmas other holidays like easter mother's and father's day cell phone stocks there you go the 
my whole goal here really is to get you into a mindset. Well, for me, when I made this, to say, I know these things are going to have to be paid for eventually, and I don't want the shock of it during that month that it actually happens at. I don't want to actually see that. Down below, so up above here, we have basically ideally what I want to have happen. Down below is my actuals when I start tracking all this. Like I said, for December, I wanted you to track everything. And these are uh, my categories broken out. I'm just going to scroll through really fast because the whole point is not to show you all of this right now. Really, it's just how this budget is. So what I do here then, I'm going to zoom out just a tiny bit. There we go. We have our total monthly bills. So here is the actual, here is ideal and the difference. The reason why I have it set up this way is because I want to know what I really did pay, ideally what I had above when I first created this budget and as I tweak it, and then the difference. That way, if it there are adjustments that need to be made, then I can actually do that. Down below here is the discretionary. That is the variable amounts that I had above. You can see, as I said before, gas, groceries, blah, 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 Christmas, holidays, Mother's Day. So this is that variable payment version, and that's what I'm going to use to track everything else that I need to spend. Lastly, down below, what I meant about having buckets throughout the year, what I do is I keep track of that from month to month. Like You are literally leaving money in your bank account. Uh, for the sole purpose of that day coming forward. This could sound familiar to you. If you're used to that whole envelope idea of putting money away, that is really what's happening here. I'm not taking money and putting an envelope. What it's really doing is it's just hanging out into the in the bank account until that one day that I actually do need it. So when that car maintenance needs to happen, when I need an oil change, inspection, or if I need tires, brakes, all that good stuff, anything happens to it, that money is really just sitting there. Likewise, you're going to have a Christmas fund. That way when Christmas happens or any holiday that you celebrate not Christmas, that way it's already there waiting for you. So I have a holiday, you have Christmas. Same thing with cell phone. We know we need to replace our cell phone. Some people go two years, some people go four years. That way when you plan it, we know cell phones are really expensive now. You need to buy the cell phone, you need to buy a case, any other charges if you want to get insurance on it. It's going to be a lot. So if you plan ahead, if you plan ahead over, let's say, two to four years, you only have to pay a little bit out of your account in preparation for that. And as your money sits in a bank account, it doesn't have to just sit in a bank account. It could sit in a savings account if you want to. And over here, I have the goals of uh, where I want to get, like vacation, and cell phone too. Normally I save enough for the cell phone to actually buy a new cell phone and then I stop putting money into it. There we are, okay? With that, I wanted just to, again, I just wanted to show you what kind of budget you are going to be making, what I'm going to show you. If that suits your needs, then I say stick around, check it out. If not, there are people out there that have some wonderful videos, wonderful articles. Please continue your journey on making a budget. I think it's awesome. With that, let us go forward and see what we're going to do for step two. To recap, step one was what you are looking at on the screen. What I do every month is I write down what I bought. This consists of the company or what actually was bought because sometimes you go to a place and you don't remember, so you need to write it down. Right? If you go to Walmart, you could have bought anything. You could have bought food, you could have bought clothes. I need you to write that down. So for December, this is actually what I paid for in date order. And we have mortgage, we have the date, and the actual amount. For this exercise for step two, what we're going to do is we're going to map this out to, is it a must or a want and the actual category that we need to put it into. As a reminder, my categories, my must and want list are actually these categories. I have mortgage, car insurance, umbrella, cable TV, electric, water, sewer, cell phones, medical, yada, yada, yada. You get the idea. Things that you need to pay for in order to survive. I know cell phones sound weird to have. You need to have this under survive, but I do have to have that for work purposes. I, I actually need it as part of a course of my job. Slush fund is interesting. I will explain that later on.
Next up is the variable discretionary and ones categories. What you're going to notice is some of these categories may not fit for you the way I have it. First one I have is gas, and that's actually gas for your car. I am a home base worker forever just because of the pandemic. I used to have an office that I would travel 35 minutes away, one way, and because of the pandemic, they closed down that office forever. So essentially, I am the, the next 30 something years, if I choose to stay at this job, I will be working at home forever. So gas for me isn't something that I need as part of work or that would be up up top on the bills. This is more just if I go outside, if I go to the store or anything like that. So it is in my power to control how much gas I use per month. So you will find, like I said, categories that even though they're under this here or you can call it something else or you may need to add a category to make your budget work for you. This is the greatest part about the budget. It's going to be super flexible to your needs and you shouldn't have to fully follow everybody's categories. There are so many things that you can do. Some may even break it out further like groceries and daily essentials. I used to have groceries as one of those ones that was just separate from itself, food. Daily essentials was like, you know, shampoo and all that stuff separated out. But I'm like, I use all that every day. I use shampoo, I use soap, I use uh, food, I eat food, right? So the, all that is combined in the one for my purposes. Identity fraud, haircuts, you could see this, anything, vacation, entertainment, all that. All that gets thrown into this once variable discretionary category because it's one of those ones you can control at any point you can delete them out and now this is the part that i want you to just follow through and you're going to be doing on your own so we have first company bought we're going to start with the first one mortgage date december 1st amount 114890 is this a must or a one you're going to write that must because you need to have a roof over your head it could have said rent it could say mortgage it could say anything else whatever it takes to put that roof over your head that's what you're going to do and obviously you need to live somewhere so we're going to mark down that as a must for me the category is mortgage or home whatever you want to use rent apartment doesn't matter next one up i have regal subscriptions to my movie theater because it's one of those ones where you heard i was a home-based worker i need to get out there's there's no way in budgets that you can just save forever you that's what everybody will tell you you cannot just budget and save forever you will burn out you will have one day where you just blow all your money because you didn't take the time to invest in yourself as in to have that fun so i have a subscription for myself and my wife it's pretty pricey it's 18 bucks but if you use it twice a month you do get your money's worth to me that is definitely a one and i put it under the entertainment category next thing we have is amazon work sunglasses 12 one, 30 bucks. My wife needed sunglasses for work. More, more for me, this thing is a one. It doesn't really fit in the must category that you need to have it. There was a category that fit that anyways. If I really wanted to, if I wanted to say work clothes, then you throw it up in the must if you really want to. For me, not really. This doesn't happen too often. So there is an actual category for anything, anything that was supposed to happen. You get the idea what's happening here with this budgeting. It shouldn't be really all that hard you should be able to find a place for it and if you can't then make a category for it car insurance is car insurance you need that that's definitely a must amazon prime some people need it i throw it there under a streaming sort of category at this point it's almost like it's a must because i just don't use it myself it's my family that uses it to purchase items to watch the actual streaming service Next up is a discount store. This is definitely a want. This is under food and daily essentials. Walmart, it's a want. Water bill, sewer bill, as you can see, those are definitely must. You have to have some sort of water and sewer. If you're renting, maybe that's included. So that's pretty nice for you. For me, I have to break it out. And that's actually how much it costs per month. And we have Peacock here for streaming as well. I know what I'm doing here is really boring. But this is what it really takes to make a budget is to see what you spent and the categories they need to go into whether you needed to have that or it was just an actual want 
uh, why I want to run through these is because my sister also made a budget. She used my ideas on a budget and made her own. And then most recently, she just saw my category. She was like, holy crap. She didn't know what to do with the foods and daily essentials. And she saw mine and it was combined together. And there was other places where she needed to break down them further. So why I'm showing this to you is so that you have this idea in mind of what you want to do with your categories and either use some of the ones I have, expand on them, or you know, maybe you don't need a category that I have on mine and get rid of it. So that's why I want to run through this on how I justify like what categories some of these go into. So my wife's family came over to make pierogies. Let me just zoom in on this one. She made, they came over to make pierogies and it was one of those ones, it was a family thing, but it was for Christmas. So I threw it under an anything but a bucket. There's going to be times where in your budget, you have no idea what they fall into. It just kind of happens. It's not anything you plan for. It doesn't make sense that this is some sort of entertainment. It's food for the upcoming holiday. And what I consider that, it just isn't anything. It's a, it's a bucket where you don't have to worry about making extra categories. That's what you want to do. We talked about cell phones, plant stands. What I actually have is a bucket for house budgets. And the, what that actually means is it's the house maintenance, like what you need for the actual house. As we know, house have upkeep, apartments have upkeep. Maybe you want to decorate and all that. I don't want decorations and all that really to just be into anything. It really needs to have its own. You, you don't want to, because we can decorate all day. We can add a million plants. We can, there's always something that needs fixing inside of a house and you really should be planning on that. So I made a house budget for my wife because if I didn't do that, she would just take as much money as she can and make home improvements. I know when we pay off this house, she's looking to make a new deck or make um, a plate, a concrete place on our grass right outside so that she can put like the grill and stuff. We do have a deck, but she wants the ability to just go out from the basement, have that cement thing there and just uh, grill or sit on that as well. I don't know why, just maybe different options for her to sit, I, who knows. Uh, the other thing is the next next one we have is Amazon. And this is one of those ones where she wrote it down as Amazon. So she, she doesn't fully write down everything. So then I have to go back and ask her. That's one of those ones where I said, you might want to write down what you bought because when you go back and look at it at the end of the month, you may have no clue what that actually was. So for me, I had to go and ask her. It was Amazon $96.94. It was clothes for her. We do have a clothing budget. And I just just as a side here, I feel bad for women. And it, it not not horribly bad, but when it comes to clothes, that has got to be real awful. I mean, guys is guys are super easy. Like if you see me in these white shirts, these were from a pack of shirts from Walmart. I think it's like Canes or Fruit of the Louvre or something. I bought like five of these in a pack for like 10 bucks, something like that. Where women needs like undergarments and, you know, just in general, feminine products, makeup, all this other stuff. It's insane how much you guys, how much you ladies have to go through and spend. I, I honestly feel bad for you. So you can basically see from my budget, I have like $50 for clothes, I think, and she has 100 I asked her if she wanted to make it higher, like 150 or something. She said she's good at 100. There are times in there are times month wise that she breaks through that $100 limit, and we just add it to that anything. I'm not going to harass her on it. If she wants to break the budget on clothes, that's fine because, like I said, women, you got it rough. I don't have to buy nearly as much stuff at all ever. And now that I don't go anywhere, now that I'm a home based worker, I really don't even. I I don't use 50. I probably use like. It's, this may be good or bad, depending on who you are, like hearing me say this, but I probably buy $200 of clothes at best during a year. And 50 of, the, 50 of that is, is uh, shoes, if I actually even need it. Uh, we have long-term disability on here. It's one of those ones where if you don't have it, I think you definitely should pick up long-term disability. Uh, for a while, we had cable internet cable TV slash internet. We actually had it because we needed the internet. 
it was actually cheaper to get the, one of those packages where it had um, internet and TV at the same time. So we did. We don't have it anymore. We are able to cut the cord because since she's work from home and I work from home, we both are actually work from home. Her company pays for the internet. So we don't have TV anymore, which is why I have those streaming services. I have Peacock, I have Amazon Prime, because I need something. We do have antennas too, but we don't need cable TV anymore, which is awesome. I really don't miss it outside of Discovery. I like watching Gold Rush. That was a good show. And um, Deadliest Catch. I, lo I love it. And uh, Moonshiners. I really miss that show. All right here, this is one of the more important ones of why I wanted December to happen. Why I wanted you to capture this in December, and it was because of Christmas. This is one of those, what I've said earlier, is Christmas is one of those ones you want to track, that you want to pay off during the year. You want to make a bucket because what we're going to do is we're going to divide out your Christmas expenditures time holidays. If you don't celebrate Christmas, then holiday season because uh, some people give out presents for other holidays and all that good stuff. You get the idea. No matter what time of year you give out presents, it's great to make a, a budget for it so that each month you can put that money into that pool and then you won't be horribly shocked when it comes up. Uh, water treatment system, we do have a water treatment system. It's one of those uh, hard water things to prevent um, staining and make uh, the water all soft and all that stuff. So that is a house expenditure. We pay for that every year, new filters and all that good stuff. Salt that you need to put into the actual system. You're gonna see discount store a lot. I do hit up the discount store a lot. I love discount stores. And one of those ones where, yeah, it saves you money, but there are food that you can't actually find in a normal store. Like there is a yogurt that I love to buy. It's, it's a cherry vanilla flavored yogurt. You can't, I tried to look up the company either. I can't, I can't find it. I don't know where this company is. It might be one of those ones where it's like a generic or an off brand that you know, a, a big brand owns and they just slap a different label on it. Can't find it anymore though. It's really depressing. I love going to that discount store. Uh, Lowe's, House, Chinese restaurant. Oh, here we go. Chinese restaurant and Regal Slushy and Bowling. So what you're going to start seeing here is this Chinese restaurant. Why is Chinese restaurant under entertainment? When it comes to actual food, when I go and eat... I'm one of those people that actually love to cook. It's one of those ones where I love to make my own food. I like barbecuing. There is rarely a time where I go want to go out to eat. It's not one of those ones. I, I remember going out to eat some wings. And I sat at that restaurant. I paid, what, $13 for 10 wings or something like that. And they were really the wings are really small. There wasn't a lot of sauce on it and I was sitting there this whole time and I'm like, I, I was enjoying it. I was trying to enjoy it. I don't want to be like a grumpy person out there. I'm, I wasn't, but in my mind, as after I left that place, I'm like, dang, I can make that these way better. And then I went home uh, sometime later, uh, went to the store, got wings and actually made it myself, you know, sauced them up, made them. It was freaking delicious at a lower cost. And that's why I don't I don't go out to eat as much. If I go out to eat, it really is because I'm out and I can't get home to make food or really it's with other people, right? I mean, not everybody wants to go to a house. People want to go out. They want to go out and have fun, eat, drink, do other things. And I'm good with that. So for me, going to a restaurant is the equivalent of some form of entertainment. So you can see right here on this day, it was, I went to a Chinese restaurant. We went to a movie. So we did dinner and a movie. I got a slushy while I was there. So that's why I consider that as part of the entertainment. Something that I don't actually need. I don't need, this isn't, this isn't for me personally. It's not food or daily essentials. This thing is really part of some sort of entertainment that I have during my day. And it's going to differ. Right, there's other people that absolutely hate cooking. I know my brother is one of those ones where uh, he would rather not cook. It, I think it might be part of a time thing. And at this other side, he'll probably say, I don't know how to cook, which is fine. But for people like that, and again, I am not disrespecting your lifestyle or anything. Some people would rather just go out to eat. I know a friend of mine, every day he will hit up the local deli or the gas station food uh, court food, whatever, food service, I guess you could say, inside of the gas station. 
and get food from there because he would he sees it as a waste of his own time right people say time is money if you can actually do something else with your time and not have to worry about cooking then that is time saved money saved and all that so he would rather go out to eat so for those kind of people you might put under your budget that going out to eat like going to that gas station going to that deli is actually food and daily essentials for me it's not and that's where the difference is so that's why what, what i mean by when you see my categories even though it makes sense to me some of this stuff may not make sense to you and you need to customize your budget as much as possible that fits for you like we're going to show you i'm going to show you different ways of making a budget other people will show you different ways some people have different categories and that's what i mean you need you really need to just Take a look at this and write the categories down as they fit for you. Because when it comes to an entertainment budget, my entertainment budget is not gigantic. You know, more than likely for most people, the food and daily essentials is going to take up a lot or a, a decent portion of your want category because you actually need that to live, right? Daily essentials is like your toothpaste and, and like I said, shampoo, food. You need those things to survive. You really can't go out to work and... Uh, be a mess and hungry. That's not going to get you anywhere. It's going to be really, really bad. Now, this right here is under Christmas niece four. So I, I took their names out. I obviously don't number my nieces or my sisters-in-law, but for the whole thing about uh, not writing names down, I just wrote niece number four. We got life insurance, trash, natural gas, obviously things I need to actually survive. The next one you'll see here under the must category under the classification is medical some of the stuff that you actually need like dentist medical visits things like that women definitely have a lot more or maybe it's just my wife that there's a lot more medical visits that happen there for me i think i see i see the eye doctor and dentist outside of that i don't really go to a doctor uh amazon plant same thing this is another house thing christmas 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 yikes Christmas is a, uh, it's painful, right? December is just one of those times a year, it just hurts. What you're not going to see on this budget that you have in front of you is what I call the slush fund. The slush fund. It is under here, under the must category, the actuals, we have a slush fund. And I'm going to explain that right now. What I am a firm believer is when we, when me and my wife made this budget, when, when I sat her down and I showed her what was about to happen as part of this uh, marriage and coexistence is the fact that we need to pay ourselves. This is one of those things where you'll hear other people talk about, like, I, like I've said before, like you need to go out and use money. This one's a little different. Obviously, I marked how much we make equal and for myself and my wife we aren't paid equally which is a hundred percent fine i don't uh, as part of my own relationship everybody needs to agree to having uh, joint bank accounts or not we have a joint bank account we have one account where all of our money goes into you know everything that we make goes into from there we have this slush fund that i was talking about right here the slush fund, what that really is, is money that we take from that main account and pay ourselves to. The reason why I want that is, right early on, I've, I've heard people, married people, talk about this, where they're like, um, we, we can buy a gift for each other, but it's not really a surprise because I could just look at my credit card bill or bank and see that you bought whatever from this store. Like, I, I can actually see you make a purchase from this store. I don't believe in that. I believe that everybody should have their money to do whatever with, right? Like it's, it's one of those ones where she likes to go get massages, which is fine. That's one of those ones that she can take her slush fund money and spend it on. So this money goes into our own personal account. So we got a joint one and each of us has our own personal accounts that you can do with whatever you want. Nobody questions it. You have, you, she could, she loves reading. So she buys books. And then I like to buy trading cards. I like investing my money. And she has more, I guess you would say, fun ideas with her money. For me, I invest it. 
I buy cards, I buy coins, I buy stocks. That's what I do with my money. I just like watching that amount of money grow. Like I said at the beginning, I like I like watching money grow, and I, I find some sort of entertainment in that in itself. So that's what this slush fund is. You're not going to see that on this budget. It's something that's paid off. I put it under a must. Some people might say, isn't that just like a variable spending that you can change? And I'm like, no, because for me, if we don't have this money, then you're going to be dipping into your main ones here. To me, it, it's, I need to have that money. I need to have that because I need to do my own things. If not, I'm just going to go crazy. She's going to go crazy. We need to have our own personal money. Obviously, it's not $400. I'm not going to tell you how much it is, but overall, that's, we have our own side account that we can spend on. Um, we also have, oh, let me just point out anything else here. So she bought, she bought more clothes. See, so there you go. Um, there's more clothes. I do real feel real bad for uh, women on that aspect. Because I didn't even truly know how much a bra cost. And it was just insane. Like how much bra costs. Like, geez, holy crap. And then, you know, makeup and all that. It's insane. You all get, I, I want to say ripped off. I don't know if that's the right word that I should be using. All I know is it, it's pretty rough. Um, we have Christmas over it. This is this is where things gone awry. Remember what I said is I like making sure we have estimates on where we want to spend. But then there's an actual. In this case, this year we went over a hundred fifty dollars on Christmas. So at the very least, we had the money to pay for it. We threw it in our anything because that's what's going to happen. But what we're gonna do then for January is we're going to adjust in the month's future. We're going to take that 150 and divide it by 12 so that when Christmas comes around next year, that way we have that extra 150 in case we need it again. Well, we will probably will. Because there was two two babies born this year. It's it's nuts. Well, not this year. It was one December, and there's one that should be coming within like a few days. Now, with that in mind, we have to add, you know, more to the Christmas fund, more to the birthday fund. What I want you to see is, again, this. So hopefully this part will make sense to you now that I went through the whole Christmas deal and all that. What I do here is have these buckets where every month you have this much money. You have, I got paid this much and these were the actual what I spent. This is what's actually left over, which you can take and do whatever you want with. Uh, but what we have here is a running total of how much money was saved from those buckets, how much should be in your account. Like if I go and look at my account, which is $10,000, let's say it's $10,000. Here is a running total of all the different amounts that I should have in the bank because of the car maintenance, right? So every month I add $200 to the car maintenance. So Right now, $3,686. That is sitting in the account. So out of this $10,000, I should have earmarked $3,686.44 for car maintenance. Haircuts and all this good stuff you can see. With Christmas, I need to change that back to zero because now we're in January. But really what happens with Christmas is I take $83.34 per month and shove that into leave that into the bank so it grows and grows and grows so by the time december happens that money is just going to disappear from my account i'm not going to feel it in my actual monthly budget because every month i budgeted 83.34 if there was an overage like what happened in here 150 then that number gets tacked onto this anything category which is right right here so I would shove that anything there. Oh, the other things is, um, uh, like, so if you want to see st other items inside of anything, there's church, there's lottery, there's all this other stuff. See, so meat grinder. My, my wife needed a meat grinder last month to help make these pierogies, food on trip, bread pan. So as you can see, there's a ton of ways you can list these categories. If, if something doesn't make sense, throw it in at anything, just get it over with that way. But you can see where I'm trying to get you to go. I need you to actually start making categories, thinking about what your budget should really look like, what you want to spend your money on. The best part about this budget is I, 
I remember thinking about this. My friend who actually used the budget I gave her, it's one of these life-changing things. It's as crazy as it sounds, it is. Because when she started doing this budget and writing down what she actually spent her money on, she came to the point where she figured out that she spent, and this is not a reflection on her lifestyle. I, you know, you choose to live how you want to live. She spent literally four hundred to five hundred dollars on beer and cigarettes per month. When you think about how I just said that, what could you do with four hundred to five hundred dollars? It, it makes you realize maybe the choices you're making on spending your money is probably not the the thing you should be doing it on again like you live your life how you want to if you want to go out and eat all the time i don't mind that's what you want to do as long as you're living within your means then that's great if she wants to smoke and and drink 400 to 500 i have no issues with that i as a friend want to see her live a healthy healthier lifestyle because i want her to be around more often and when she saw that she actually did cut back on those actual items like the cigarettes the the beer the alcohol and all that so it was one of those ones where this budget helps you keep in line to actually hit your goals but in doing so you might see some things that you don't want to recognize about yourself and that's why i wanted you to write down what you spent in december because it's a lot easy to just say no i don't spend it or you have this ballpark in your mind that you spent but then if you don't go back and take a look at it, like write it down for yourself, you don't see how bad it actually is. Like we are, we're, we're able to kind of ignore in a way the bad choices that we make, or maybe not even bad choices, just how much uh, we spend in a certain category. And by doing this budget, you're able to keep yourself in line. And realistically, what I want in the end is for you to live a life that's not a stressing about money and you know that you can retire early that's the whole goal my goal in life really is not to work for 30 more years i when i said that i was like oh god there's no way i'm living 30 years like within the next year within i think roughly six months i will pay off my house just so you know i've only owned this house for six years over a little over six years and i am going to pay it off in uh six months from now so it was it is an amazing thing and i wouldn't have been able to do it without using this budget plan that i created okay so go ahead do that must and the categories i will see you back here for step three the reason why i'm not making these videos all in a row is because i really want you to actually go through these exercises you really need to devote the time to do this correctly and once you have this then it's clockwork every month you just shove in your numbers, uh, your what you spent, what you bought, take a look at your numbers, make some tweaks, and you're good. So for January, as these videos are coming out, just remember, keep track of what you're spending your money on. That's where we need you to go. And as always, have fun, be happy, and don't spend anything outside of your budget. Have a good day, everybody.